good morning, church, and happy Sabbath to everyone. Amen. Um, may I request the presenter? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, the administrator has just given me the presenter mode. Um, uh, before we start our lesson, may we all bow our heads in prayer to invite the Holy Spirit. Our Heavenly Father, we want to call upon thy name this morning. We thank you and we praise your name because of this beautiful day you've given us. It is only the day that we can rejuvenate our spiritual life, we can rejuvenate our lives, our rest from all the hassles of the week. And because you have uh, sanctified this day and set it aside, I pray that we may benefit every single thing, uh, every word that is going to be shared on this day. As we open your scriptures, as we study your lesson, as we study about Jesus, we pray that you may talk to us. First of all, talk to me and everyone else. And after all has been said and done, let our names be written in the book of life. Thank you. I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Um, right. Can we all see my screen? Somebody say amen. 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 All right. Thank amen. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, and my reader, if you are there with the one who's going to read for us, say amen, please. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, uh, everything is ready. Okay, so our lesson, as you can see on the screen, uh, the title of our lesson um, is Jesus as the Master Teacher. Right. I'm going to start by asking uh, a few questions to the class. What is a teacher, by the way, by definition? And it's not a rhetoric question. I need an answer from the class. Does anyone know what a teacher is? Okay, I will attempt that one. Thank you. I think because because I have seen one. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, a teacher is someone who passes his knowledge to uh, other people so that they also understand. Okay, all right. He passes knowledge to others so that they understand. Okay, someone else? But remember, this is a Sabbath school lesson, so uh, the, the students, uh, they participate more, the facilitator um, depends on the students' uh, interaction. And anyone who's got a definition of a teacher? Well, the, another more... definition is is a person yeah. who teaches, especially in school. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, there, there's a word, uh, a, a person who teaches, especially in school. All right, someone was about to say something also. Um, he's the yeah. one who gives guidance and um, his actions to his actions normally also are the ones that will help his learners to understand to better understand the knowledge okay. that he gives all right okay um you know i, I think uh, the, the the definitions are, that we have and also some with what you have at the back of your mind that you haven't said um it, it it's it's a, a definition of a teacher right and um uh, you know, if, if I may also add something here, my, myself, that is my profession. I, I deal uh, with, with, um, with teaching, so and I'm a teacher by profession. That's all I've done in my life. So uh, we are asked to uh, lead the students in a specific way, right? We, we need to, we, we, we have got objectives that are set uh, that must be achieved, um, you know, so that uh, when we, we when you teach you you like prepared and we don't just teach first we first of all become students and we learn uh, I think it took me about five years uh, actually six years of uh, study and we are still studying uh, today uh, so that uh, we become a you know the the, the the link of transferring knowledge uh, so that 
when you stand there, the students are, are able to understand and assimilate what you are putting across to them. Right. Now, uh, that is a teacher, um, and you know, you, you know, there's so many uh, facets and, and branches of teaching. Now, in this lesson, we are not just talking about a teacher. We are talking about a master teacher. All right. So in other words, the teachers that you know and that have studied and that have done all the highest levels of teaching, right? we are talking about the master of those teachers. All right. That, that is the one that we are talking about. And he has got a name, and his name is Jesus. So we are going to learn um, a couple of... Um, you know, uh, lessons from the uh, from the master themselves, uh, from the master himself. Um, and as you can see, the picture on the screen, uh, you know, the, here is the master, and I believe that these are, uh, you know, he's the master teacher, and probably these are probably students which are probably need to be teachers. So he's teaching them how to teach, maybe, if I can imagine that way. Right, mom, uh, can you please read Second um, Corinthians from the Bible? Chapter 4, verse 6, which is our first verse. Um, verse 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his mm -hmm. light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Amen. So, uh, the, the, the master of teachers, okay, uh, who is standing, all right, when you see the master of teachers, right, uh, the, 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 that teacher reflects the glory of God. Okay. I'll tell you something um, you know, that, that I usually experience. Uh, the way you present information in front of the students, right, determines how much those students are going to understand what you, what you are teaching them. Right? If there is no uh, passion and you don't reflect what you're teaching, no matter how much you wanna pretend and stand there, they they will not understand it. Okay, I'm sure if, if we talk about the stories of who was your favorite teacher in your school, uh, and if I ask you the career that you're following now, maybe it's one teacher that taught you in some level in your educational system because of the passion that that particular teacher showed and how much the teacher was engraved in what he's presenting made you maybe to choose your career today, maybe already, you may be very familiar already, but because of the nature of the person that was standing in front of you, you will have then decided to follow that particular career. Right. Now, imagine here, right, the Christ who is the master teacher, right, who is standing, and the master teacher is standing, uh, it says, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. So whatever we present um, is something that must be seen within our what? Within our faces. All right. Um, a, can some, anyone wants to add, add anything on that one? All right. Once people are thinking, you can interject me along the way. It says, at the time of Jesus' birth, humanity lay mingled and bleeding in the need of a healing vision of God. It is as though humankind pleaded, Oh God, could we see your face? In sending his son to this planet, the father sent the master teacher on a mission to show humankind his face. Ever since, we have had the wondrous privilege of beholding the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All right. So there is the... the, 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 the a master teacher uh, who is revealing himself uh, to to us so that we may understand you know so that we may see the face of what we can see the face of God through him so um, uh, it says as we watch the master teacher make his way to earth what can we learn from, from him so we will go through step by step and have an experience of what this master teacher had um, the path that he followed, the people that he interacted with, what was his emphasis? And this is the, the lessons that we need uh, to learn this morning. Anyone else wants, uh, anyone wants to say anything on that part? Right. Now the master is on earth. 
Uh, my brother and sister, can you read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 4? Uh, from chapter 1. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors, to the prophets, at many times in various ways. But mm -hmm. in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir to all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The sun is a radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by the powerful word. After he had provided a purification of, of four sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is supreme to theirs. Yes, thank you, Tristan. Now, the question is, how was uh, how was the message passed through to, uh, in the past? It's a question. How was the message passed through in the past? By word the, of mouth. Word of mouth through the what? Through prophets. With, through the prophets. Okay. Through the prophets. Yeah, sorry. Right. So it was passed through the prophets. That's why if you can read the book of um, Isaiah, uh, you know, Prophet Isaiah spoke, uh, talking about the coming of Jesus. Uh, when you talk about, when you look at, uh, a, you know, the, 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 the prophet uh, Ezekiel, you know, those dry bones that became flesh, uh, you know, the, the prophets were, were actually speaking uh, in the olden times, all right? Um, and then um, we, we, we now have got... Uh, the, who, who is now communicating to us through who? Who, is, who are we now communicating through who is now communicating to us in the old times it was the prophets and Jesus. now who are they through Jesus, Jesus. yes son. Uh, Jesus the son who is then identified as the master teacher All right. and he is uh, communicating to us okay so if you look at the the uh, the Bible, um, it says Jesus is the reflection of God's glory, right? As sinful humans, we could not enjoy full access to the glory of God as the incarnate Son. Jesus reflects that particular glory. It is muted in Christ's humanity so that we might see it and understand clearly the character of who, the character of God, right? So, remember, at the beginning, Christ was there during creation, right? Even in the time of prophets, of prophets, Christ existed, right? But now, he then became flesh, he became incarnate. Why do you think Christ would become incarnate? Why would, he, why would you think that Christ, why was it so important, or why is it important that Christ becomes incarnate? Um, may I speak there? Yes, go ahead. I, I think uh, for us to fully understand and comprehend the Father, uh, Christ had to become incarnate so that he shows us what the Father is like in heaven because mm. we, we couldn't see uh, the Father face to face because of sin. But Christ came to this earth mm. and he became one of us to reveal the Father to us. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So he, we, we could not because, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 we, we could not see uh, you know, the glory of God. We, um, if you remember, you know, it says Moses saw the back part of uh, of God um, and each time Moses would come out from Mount Sinai when he was holding the commandments they would see this brightness which was just too much to stand because it, it the brightness was on Moses imagine having meeting God face to face right so it would be difficult uh, it was going to be difficult for humanity to be able to process the glory and the goodness of God uh, it was going to be overwhelming, All right? So the son is the one now who manages, who comes now to translate that particular glory. Um, and that's why you see that, you know, in the Bible, they say, he who hath seen me, has seen the what? Has seen the father, All right? 
So it says here, Jesus is, is the express image of his person. The term used in Greek or character is some, um, a word character is sometimes used of the impression a, a seal makes in wax or the representation stamped on a coin. So Jesus is the exact imprint of God's very being. Ah, so if we need to know the Father, we must listen carefully to the Master Teacher. Um, uh, you know, what he says about him. And we must watch the Master Teacher as well. Okay, so it's not just about speaking, uh, but also it's about seeing uh, what the what, what the Son uh, did. Okay, uh, Tristan, can you read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4? Um, I wanted to read from verse 1 to 6. Like, is Marie today? Oh, yeah, I'm okay, okay. All right, thanks. Um, therefore, since three, oh, sorry, chapter Corinthians chapter 4, 1 to 6. Yes, it is to me, yeah. Okay. Therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry. We do not lose heart, rather we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use decapitation, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth pl plan, planning, we co commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God and even in our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing the God of the ages has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God for what we must preach is not ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as a servant for Jesus sake for God who said let light shine out of darkness and made his light shine in our hearts and give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ thank you Hallelujah. Okay. So the light of the glory of God is expressed in who? It is expressed in Jesus. All right. So if you want to know who God is, all right, you need to spend time with who? You need to spend time with Christ. All right. So remember, if you go back to, to creation, the, when darkness entered, you know, when sin started manifest, manifesting on Earth. Um, that is when darkness entered, and that then created that blurry understanding of who God was. It um, made uh, even people not to realize who they are because uh, of sin that had entered, right? Uh, because many ran short of the glory of God, therefore it was difficult for men themselves to be able to understand who God who God was. So there was a distortion that happened and there was complete confusion um, and complete darkness. People didn't know, uh, you know, you, 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 if you can follow the story from the Old Testament, you can see that, uh, you know, uh, all the systems uh, were, were, were affected. Um, you can see from Genesis when after the fall of men, people didn't even know uh, that they need to, a man has to marry a woman, uh, you know, there were so many things that started happening. Um, if you look at the laws that were in Leviticus, you could see that, uh, you know, the sterility started rising. Um, you know, they, they were putting laws, we start, they, they started putting laws into place. Uh, and I, I don't know, it was so dark. That's why, you know, the commandments were saying, a, a son cannot sleep with his own, own mother. You know, the, those were, were commandments that were given or uh, laws that were given because people had lost, uh, you know, the direction, you know, and uh, you see that even in Leviticus, God was like uh, saying, you know, even the food that you eat, make sure that you eat uh, this type of food and it was described, you know, the type of meats and all other things, right? What had happened is people, the glory of God and the express image of God had been lost in terms of um, right from when uh, humanity fell. Therefore, we lost the image of Christ. You can see with what's happening today. And this is where Jesus comes. This is where the master comes, right? So that's why he says Jesus is God at creation, used the light to dispel darkness. He has given us his son, Jesus, to dispel false views about him and to show us the truth about God. It is in the face of Jesus that we gain the clearest knowledge of God. Right. 
in anyone who needs uh, wants to contribute anything on that one yes uh, i've got a question yes to the class um, yes um the question emanates from uh hebrews 1 verse 1 and 2 which was uh, our leading verse mm -hmm. <clears throat> right so it uh, speaks of god in times past you were speaking to us through the prophets um that was through visions and dreams but uh now he speaks to us through his son so um and it specifically says uh in these last days he speaks to us through his son so does it mean that um whatever prophetic message was given is not relevant for us or we discard all the message of the prophets and we only look at Jesus Christ. Here is a question to the class. That question is not definitely directed to me. Hello, class. Right. I think uh, we, we don't have to discard what the prophet said and what the laws and the Psalms said because all of those pointed were a substitute for the real Christ. So when he came, he fulfilled what was the substitute. So he, he came in place of what used to stand for him. That's why we can't, for, we can't discard everything. We, we, we understand what it pointed to. And if something is pointing you to the city, it's, it's still a good road to use to get to the city. So now we've gotten to the place where Christ now has revealed himself or God has revealed himself. And, and he, he came to fulfill what was said earlier. And it doesn't mean that all that is already forgotten or all that is not useful anymore. Because I know that we, we rush to go to the, many people rush to go to the Sabbath and say this law is not, it's done away with anymore. It's not that. It's just that most of these things were pointing to him. And now when he came, he gave us a better view of even those laws that we didn't understand. And now we do them in love with understanding. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, Elder. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I think uh, when God gave us messages through the prophets, you can see that the messages or the teachings were uh, came in uh, small pieces, but uh, like as Elder Ngore said, they were pointing to Jesus Christ. So those are small lights that were coming to us, or small lights that were dispersing darkness. But so we cannot then just say we are going to throw away them. But we are so grateful that God gave us Jesus Christ as the fullness of the message that was being given to different prophets in different parts. Amen. Mm. All right, that's a good one. Uh, uh, can I, I come yesterday? <laughs> yes, right. uh, just, just to hear what is said. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, there's some background noise, I think. All right, so, so just to add on the, um, the question was, I think the question was also asked before, and it was answered by, by Christ himself in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, when mm -hmm. he said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come mm -hmm. not to abolish them, but to fulfill, fulfill them. So mm -hmm. the, the message of Christ is not contradicting to the prophet's message from the prophets. So you know, it is from this same source. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for touching for touching that one. Um, so uh, Jesus himself clearly the states is is not come to what uh, to abolish the prophets or but actually to fulfill what they want what they said. So we are looking in the same. Uh, in, the, in the same message, and I was also also. Uh, I've got a question, to... Elder. Go ahead. Sorry, my, my question now is: If someone comes to 
ask or to you and tell and say, uh, uh, since uh, according to Hebrew, uh, uh, God spoke to us at so many times through the prophets, and now there is Christ. What about these prophets that are there today now? What do we say of them? Do we now say we should have prophets speak to us or they are now done away with? We don't have to listen to any of those. All right. There is a good question uh, to, to the class. I, I like that question. Okay. I think that the Bible tells us that God showed us through the prophets and then uh, through John the Baptist and then finally through Jesus himself. Thank you. Uh, may I try and answer that question a bit? <laughs> yes, light on it? <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Okay, we had we had a prophet especially for our church. Her name was Ellen White. A lot of people don't even talk about her, but through the spirit of prophecy, we were it was made clear to us all the prophecies of the prophets who spoke about Jesus and who even spoke about his second coming. So seeing as since Daniel we've been had we've had light as to the end times and revelation confirms those things of Daniel. I don't think we need another prophet uh, as far as uh, discerning the, the scriptures is concerned. Just my thought on it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, anyone else to respond to that? Okay, All right. Um, um, uh, it becomes a, a bit complicated, Elder. Can can we also read um, Luke sixteen verse sixteen? Okay. Luke sixteen verse sixteen. Yes. Do you want the reader to read, or you want to read yourself? Yeah, the reader can read. Okay. So, so our reader Tristan, can you go to Luke sixteen verse sixteen? Uh, I'm there. Okay. Uh, verse verse sixteen. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John, since the time the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached, and everyone is forced forcing their ways into it. Thank you. Okay. So th that was one of the uh, things that also um, maybe just to add to that has brought. Um, a bit of some contention um, because mm. when interpreted, uh, some say um, all the prophets they they were until the time of John, and then after John, they there was no more uh, prophets that would come and uh, give the messages. Only like um, the disciples that were going to preach until today until the second coming of jesus christ um but we have um the prophetic message that was given after the after the time of john so i would say um the Bi the bible also says when god needs to communicate with his people he also raises up a prophet and there are tests that we can see uh, we, we can uh, test a prophet to see if the messenger is from God or is not from God. So I, I still think that uh, maybe in one way or the other, God may still use um, or may still raise um, a prophet to with a prophetic message that they, they may need to say, but they have to also meet all the uh, requirements that uh, a true prophet would uh, fit into so if they do not meet any of the standards that were set in biblical times and that we can see that uh, this proves that this person is from God then definitely those are false prophets because in Matthew 24 it actually tells us that towards the end of the age we are going to have many false prophets that are going to, to be coming up mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so um, God, uh, you know, raises prophets um, 
in 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 his time and according to to the need um and and i'm sure uh you know as long as um the the the, the prophet is uh, tested um and see whether they are from god um i, I think we my my take is that uh we cannot limit god to say um up to a certain point because god can always reveal himself uh in in a different way but then you need to test whether the spirit is from god or from what or from the enemy um but at the moment we 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 we've got a revelation that came through um you know not only sister white but even other pioneers of um of the adventists uh, because sometimes we tend to think no it is only uh sister white that uh, that who got the revelation but you find that there were other people um you know like bates and and um uh, uh james white the other couple of people that also uh, had the revelation of these things so um we we cannot say only say that is only probably uh through through sister white that uh, you know the truth that we are uh you know preaching today uh, came from uh, one individual but yes um we 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 cannot limit god's ways uh, indeed All right um i also wanted to 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 point out that if you look at um i think the is is Luke chapter 4 verse 11 when jesus is is being tempted um and then um uh you know the, the he always refers to it is written right um so he was referring to the messages that were written even by the uh, by the prophets in the previous one so um he he came to fulfill uh, that which was spoken by the prophet so we do certainly use that which was uh, um used in, to, during this particular time it has become much clearer why because uh christ himself uh, has lived it uh, and shown people how to live right um let's go to the revealing the father continues right um let's go to can you read um uh, tristan can you read john chapter 1 verse 14 and 18 um right okay. Okay, can you read it? yes verse 14 the word became yes. flesh and made it dwelling among us we have seen mm. his glory the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth and then verse 18 mm. no one has ever seen god but this one and only son who is himself god and is in close closest relationship with the father has made him known okay no one had seen the father did you hear that part but only uh, his express image his express person he who he is is um uh, shown and is reflected through through jesus right and uh in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god um and now it dwelleth among us it dwell, dwelleth among us um in in the book of john so you you realize that um it is a very clear uh revelation um that um you know through christ we understand who god is right so it says uh here uh, i just want to read this comment here it says the light appeared when the world's darkness was deepest there was but one hope for human race that the knowledge of god might be restored to the world christ came to restore this knowledge and he came to set aside false teaching by which those who claimed to know god had misrepresented him he came to manifest the nature of his law to reveal his own character the beauty of holiness that from that's from the book education page 74 to 76 everything jesus did in his life on earth had a single purpose the revelation of who of god for the uplifting of of humanity that was christ right so he he was the uh, link the missing link uh in terms of connectivity uh between who uh between uh humanity and god himself all right so um and, and 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 it's very clear here um you know when when the bible uh, when the bible talks I, I wanted to read um john 14 verse 9 uh so that also we have a clear who can you read john 14 verse 9 uh tristan
John 14 verse mm. 9. I actually start from this. Uh, I want you to start from this age. Verse 8. Okay. Yeah. Until 9. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the first oh. 8 and uh, up to 9. Yeah. Okay. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say? How can you say, "Show us the Father"? Hey, here's a question. <laughs> He's saying, "Show us the Father." <laughs> the Philip, right? Uh, and, and, and Philip he had walked with um, he had walked with Christ. Do you get what I'm saying? He had spent time with Christ. Right? He had fellowship with Christ. And I'm sure Philip had experienced the miracles uh, of Jesus. Right? He had seen what Jesus has done. But the, 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 in this part here, Philip still saying, uh, show, show us the Father <laughs> to Christ. And, and I'm, I can imagine Christ actually, you know, uh, wondering or, you know, kind of uh, smiling and saying to him, you are saying that you have not seen the Father, but look, I'm standing right here with you, and you are telling me that you have not seen the Father. Right. And, and, and he expresses very clearly that um, he who had seen Jesus, if you have seen Jesus, you have seen the what? You have seen the Father. Right. So, Philip had not realized the, the incarnation of Christ himself uh, representing the master. It says here, um, it's just, you're he, he actually wondering how we could not understand uh, that you have not seen the Father, but with Christ. So I, I've heard some people say, no, I feel more closer to Christ, to, to, uh, in other platform and discussion. So someone will say, I feel more cl cl closer to Christ, the Son, but not the Father. And someone is saying, no, I may feel closer, I may much closer to the Holy Spirit than the what? Than the Father or than Jesus himself. Uh, how, how would you help such a person? I mean, what, what does that mean when a person says, I feel closer to this one than that one uh, in, this, in this regard? C can we discuss that one? Because I had a, a couple of uh, different answers that were coming up. And I think this is the same question that Philip is posing. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, so we can't believe in one and not the other. Okay. They are one, yeah, you can't believe in one. Let just add on to that. It's uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's, it's three entities, but one in purpose. One in but purpose. One in okay. Uh, it, it, Elder, it, yes. it said... Okay, we read 14, verse 8 and 9. Mm -hmm. Then in 10 it says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Yes. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own mm -hmm. authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Yes. Hallelujah. That's it. That, that's the Father in me and I in the Father. There is, so uh, there is no way you can say I feel much closer to Christ than to the Son and not the Father. Because the Son is saying they, you know, they, 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 they are interconnected. They, there, is, there is no separation of um, getting closer to the, to the Father when I'm getting closer to the Spirit. Um, because this is one entity. Right? This is why you find that um, when Jesus speaks, he says, no one comes to the Father, but through who? But through me. All right. And um, there, there is no ways uh, that this two can be separated. Okay. Right. Can you move on to uh, reading the master, uh, the master teacher's mind? Uh, can you read Philippians 2, verse 1 to 4? Okay. Philippians 2, verse 1 to 4. Philippians 2, verse 1 to 4, just 4. Just 1 to 4. This is 1. Okay. Therefore, if you have any 
encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness from and compassion, then make the joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humanity value, other above yourself, not looking at your own interests, but each but each of you to the interests of the other others. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um right. So so here is a a, a, a um a, a deep understanding uh you know when when Philip here uh, is expressing right which says um you know the, the pre-existing of Christ and his divinity his incarnation, his humanity, his acceptance of death on the cross describes the long, difficult downward road that Jesus took from heaven to Calvary. Right? Uh, it describes how the Father exhorts Jesus to a position of the investor worship. A lot of amazing uh, truth is packed into the what? Into the um, universe. I just want us to read, um, a, you know, looking at the mind. Uh, in the mind uh, of, the, of the master. Can you also read uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11? I want us to read that one so that we hear um, you know, what the scripture says. Philippians um, 2, verse 9. Verse nine. Okay. Mm. Uh, verse 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That is mm. the name of Jesus. Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledges, acknowledges, acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God and the Father. Right. There you go. Every creature where in heaven and where and on earth. Right. So if you are seeing beings that are in heaven worshiping Jesus himself, and then, and then it comes down to earth and says, everyone should bow down, bow down and worship him. That attribute can only be the attribute of what can be the attribute of God. And it says, when Christ comes here and when Christ is living on earth, the master is basically making it much easier for us, uh, doubting Thomas, uh, 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 so that we may believe and understand that here is what God expects us to do. Here is how we are supposed to live. Here is the step by step that we are supposed to follow, right? And he is the express image of of, um, of heaven. So he is a master teacher because he is not just saying things that he wants us to do, but he is living what we are supposed to, how we are supposed to live. So that we, when he makes one step, we also follow the step. When he wakes up to pray, then we also pray. When he goes up to the mountain to pray, we also pray. When he spends 40 days and 40 nights, we also spend our time committing. He is living as the express image of God himself. Um, and that would definitely be, will make it much easier. Imagine the disciples, um, if they are told to pray only, and they haven't seen Jesus going to pray. And Jesus goes to pray, comes back, he says, why are you still sleeping? You know, so the, 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 the disciples will be able to say, look, Jesus has gone to pray. He showed us that he can go to pray and we must pray. So it is, the, it is his life that he was living so that we may what? We may be able to follow it. Okay. So uh, we are reminded that there is much, we are reminded that there is much to learn from the master teacher, Jesus. We learn from the messages that he shares during his earthly ministry. We learn from the miracles that he performs and the way that he acts towards others. We may seek to model our own relationships with others after his great uh, conditions, uh, conditions and by dwelling on his willingness to exchange the glories of heaven for a manger. What a lesson. Exchange for the glories of heaven, exchange of the street of gold uh, and that special stone um, that they talk about, um, you know, in that crystal sea. And he comes down 
and settles himself and born in a manger uh, where these animals are found and the, the, the most, the, one of the fittest places you can find, stinking places, and he comes there um, and that is, he exchanges his glories coming down to earth so that the humanity can see a salvation. Um, um, what, what manner of, of, of love and what manner um, you know, of the express image of who God is uh, through, through Jesus Christ. All right. Um, it says on the last part here, I like this, these questions. He said, what situation are you facing even now in which you're humbling you, in which you're humbling yourself could give you a powerful opportunity to reflect Christ to others? Are we able to humble ourselves? Even now, like Christ did to descend from heaven and is coming to a manger uh, and live among us. Sinners. The one who was spotless. Right. Right. Um, um, any comment, please feel free to uh, to comment. The master teach and reconciliation. Right. Um, um, yes, go ahead. Yeah, for me, I think it's this lesson is so so touching and profound. Uh, I'm just asking myself that <laughs> could it be that we we are we are Philip's? You know, Philip was with Jesus for quite a long time. You know, we might have known Christ for for a long time, but we still have a question. You know, to ask him, um, show us the Father, and and. And I take it this because sometimes we might um, think we know who the Father is. Because when I read Matthew chapter 16, verse um, 18 to 19, the discussion that took place between Christ and his disciples, and when he asked the question, who do men, men say I am? Now, mm. they gave the answers, but when Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, Christ responds on that, says, uh, blessed are you, Simon, uh, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed by you by flesh and blood, <laughs> right, but mm. uh, by my father in heaven. So so, so I'm just trying to, to reflect on this lesson and, and say, um, I think it's important for us to, to always be in prayer for, for, for God himself to reveal to us, to understand better who Christ is. And, and when we do that, we can understand better who God is. <clears throat> I think that comes as a revelation, uh, not just a, a, a blurred or construed uh, understanding that we, we might say we, we have. And so it is just a, a, a lesson to me to say, I always need to be in constant prayer for the Lord to reveal himself to me so that I can have a, 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 a strong uh, relationship and understanding of, of who he is. Thank you. Mm, mm, that's true. All right. Thank you very much, um, uh, Brother Nembawari. So the master teacher and uh, reconciliation. Um, can I can comment somebody... out? Yes. Sorry, sorry to, to drag you back. Um, uh, uh, I need to comment on the lesson because I think this this uh, quote we are learning from the true education that comes from God uh, through Jesus Christ. And uh, like on the last part that we just touched, uh, we see how Christ was humble enough to come from heaven to be in one of the deadliest places in the world, the manger where the animals stay, they feed, they throw out their waste there. To me, that's, that's something that is uh, a very, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, but with that's a very big lesson of humility. And you can see from the the message of, 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 of Jesus Christ himself that he actually dealt much on humility. And that is one of the things pride that is going to stop many of us from entering into heaven and this is a great challenge that we have as uh, people who uh, claim to, to be christians that we need to be very humble 
to that extent like what jesus christ did and to try and comprehend and understand what what is it that christ did as an example that's why he he was incarnate that he would show by example so that is one mm -hmm. of the greatest example that he set for us amen 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 that, that's that's powerful right um reconciliation <laughs> Uh, if for me, I think this is one of the uh, one of the greatest um, lesson or one of the greatest things that um, as Christians, and if everyone would follow and follow the steps of Christ, I think this world will be full of peace. Right, human relationships all too often break down. We become estranged from one another. The person who was once our close friend's friend becomes over time someone we distrust. However, such a broken relationship can be mended. When that happens, we experience the wonder of reconciliation. And a few human experiences are as sweet as this. Right. Uh, let us read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16, 16 to 21. I just want us to dwell on this a little bit um, and maybe after this particular lesson on Wednesday, uh, we'll look back on ourselves and look where we can really uh, change and transform ourselves. Okay, can you read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16 to 21? Okay, <clears throat> verse 16. Mm. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we only regard Christ in this way, we do not... We do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is mm. gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who re recon reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us ministry of reconciliation. That God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has com committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God will making his appeal through us. We employ we implore you on Christ's behalf. We can reconcile to God. God made a God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you. Mm. All right. So so here is a a, a a process of reconciliation that maybe if we apply it in our lives. Um, if we apply this process of reconciliation of our, of our lives, I think um, this world will be full of peace. Right. Now, number one, uh, who in this relationship of us with God, uh, who, who, who is at fault here? If I may ask. Who, who, got, who left this particular relationship at the beginning? Is it God who left us? It is us. Right? We left uh, what God did, um, you know, the relationship that we were in, that we were in with God. Right? Uh, we were so connected. And when God creates us in the beginning, he creates us according to his image. And not just image, he says, according to his likeness. Right, I think that's Genesis 126 somewhere there. Right. When it talks about being created according to God's likeness, so we were interconnected. We were like so close. We were tight, if we can use these terms, with God. But guess what? Who, who ran away from this relationship? It is humanity. Right? And uh, we did all the things we uh, blasphemed against God. We have uh, denied Him uh, day after day, and with all our actions, um, and we wanted to become like God. You know that experience between Eve and 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 uh, when the serpent, uh, you know, tempted him. We are the one who have completely ran away from God. But I want you to see one thing here: who is making an initiative in the reconciliation? question to the class it is jesus christ 
because the Bible tells us that before the world was formed, mm. he yes. decided to come and and save us. Yeah. So, and in Psalms it says that he knew our parts and how many days we would live and what we would do in our lives before mm. the world was formed, before the foundation of the earth. So yeah. the relationship has always been there. We have separated ourselves through sin, but exactly. God is always there for us and he knows us. He knows everything about us and he knows that we want to be whole. And the only way we could be whole is to come to him. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you know what, my, my, my brothers and sisters, um, friends and family, uh, this act that was done, God coming to us, sending his son, becoming incarnate, he was reconciling us to himself. God can do without us. God does not need us, but we need God. Okay? But because of the manner of love that God has, he initiated the process. And this process was not an easy process, remember. Christ lived on this earth and he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. And it was not just one of those deaths that you just die nicely and then, ah, no, you went to sleep and you didn't wake up the following morning. No, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary. Blood, he died a slow death, drop by drop by drop, being laughed at, being mocked at, people spitting at him with a thorny crown in the open public on the highest point so that the whole world and everyone else who was in that city could see him. And the only reason that was doing that was the reconciliation. Now my question to you this morning on this lesson, even if we don't do anything else, is have you made men with your family? And friends what is making you to make an initiative even if you are the person who is right in this relationship I hope you hear me even if you are the one that is right right are you making steps towards reconciliation with your brother with probably if you are about on the or you are on the verge of divorce or whether you are whatever are you making an initiative even if you are right that is my that is my point here i'm not talking about uh whether someone did wrong to you no no i'm talking about you being the right person in this relationship are you making steps to go and see that cousin of yours or that sister of yours or that your parent of yours whoever the person is are you making initiatives because this is what the master teacher is asking us to do as simple as all that that he had to leave all his glory and come on earth and say, look, I'm here. Please come back to me and let's make men's meet. I don't know. I mean, may, maybe, maybe it's me. Right. Right. It is clear that who is doing the reconciliation. It is God himself. So why is it that you ask me this morning, why are we not making that particular step and say, look, you know what, you know you did me wrong and this, this is what I've done and this is what you've done to me. But look, can we make steps so that we can do reconciliation? But what stops us from doing this? Can we discuss this part here? And I, I, even if we don't discuss anything else, can we discuss this part here? Pride, pride, pride. Right. That's right. That's right. It's the pride that, that we have, and and it also speaks to our needs to 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 learn from 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 Christ and understand our, uh, Christ Himself, and mm. um, 
you know, it comes back to, to the, the verse that you read in the, in the beginning that if any man be in Christ, in Christ is a new creature. This is mm. revolutionary. You yeah. know, if you still have old self, you know, it doesn't make sense to reconcile, you know, with somebody who has done you wrong. So mm. I think Christianity in this is it's, it's, uh, life changing. Thank you. Hello, hello, Elder. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I, I think like the others said, it, it comes back to pride. And we also love to show the world that we are right and we did this right, yet this person did this wrong. So in the process of trying to prove that we are right, that's why we don't want to um, make the first step towards the people that have done us wrong. Uh, you can look at the... Uh, I would love to look at the example of Joseph when he realized that his wife was pregnant and he didn't sleep with uh, Mary. He decided mm -hmm. to do it secretly. He was humble enough to do it secretly and not want to uh, reveal to everyone that this is what is happening. So that mm -hmm. is what we should be like. But very unfortunately, we love to show to the world that we did the right choice. We are the right Christians. We are the right people who are doing it the right way. And this is this one, they've done it wrong, and people must see that these are doing wrong and I'm doing right. Mm, 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 mm. Right. I wanted to listen to this paragraph here, the last one. It says, while we could never match the cosmic scale of the master's teacher's work as a reconciler, we are invited to participate in the ministry of reconciliation in our own sphere. Right? Second Corinthians 5, verse 18. Could this be what was Jesus' mind when he prayed? As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. My, my prayer is that, uh, my brothers and sisters, if we are serious about eternity, okay, if we are serious about heaven, <laughs> we need to follow the master teacher here. Right? You, you just need to sit down maybe after this lesson, take your diary, um, and take your phone and say, look, uh, you know what, my brother, I, because you uh, discussed that you caused in my whole life at the one, two, three, four, five. But you know what, I'm prepared uh, to make men's meet. I'm going to mend things. I, I honestly need to make an initiative. Uh, you know, the, 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 the gospel, um, it, it calls us, it's a deeper connection with 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 God, right? Because he, he, sometimes it doesn't make sense. How could Jesus say, "Forgive them, Lord"? They know not what they they, they don't know what they are doing. Um, when he is bleeding and this is so much pain, and people are still mocking him, but still, you know, in these first steps of reconciliation, it doesn't make sense. How, how do you reconcile with the person that has abused your own child? That has raped your own daughter, has molested your own son, the person that has uh, broken your 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 trust, your 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 wife. How do you reconcile that? Uh, it, it takes it takes divine power for us to be able to what to be able to enter into the space in which Jesus was walking in when he was coming to forgive, and he says to uh, to so as he was persecuting the Christians, uh, he says, "Why do you persecute me?" I mean with all the murders and the letters that he was holding, persecuting Christians, he still was busy reconciling with humanity. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I mean, it is our choice. Uh, it is our choice, indeed. But uh, moving on probably to the last part as we probably come to the end, uh, is our, our time is almost up. Um, the, the master teachers face pupils, but right, face students. Can you read Luke chapter 2? I'll, I'll ask you to read from verse 8, and then we can. I'll ask you to stop uh, at some point. Can you, uh, Tristan, uh, Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 8? Um, <clears throat> uh, chapter 2, verse 8. And they, were shepherds yeah. Living, yeah, they were, and they were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord mm. appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord mm. shone around them, and they were terrified. <laughs> But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that you will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, mm. the Lord. 
This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to go another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the manger. When they had seen him and spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child, and all who had heard the amazing, amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all the things and pondered them into their hearts. The shepherd returned, glorified and praising God with all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, so here is, is, is a scene in which um, we, we have got, um, you know, the first peoples, like peoples are those students um, uh, that, that, that receives uh, the master uh, teachers as, as, as lesson, right? Uh, the, the Joseph and Mary and the shepherds were the pupils, basically, right? The humble conditions of Jesus' birth give no indication of the wonder of the incarnation, that in the person of this infant, God has become one with humankind. However, with the aid of visions, dreams, and angels, those first students of his are able to look beyond the outward appearance of Jesus' birth. The shepherds share with others the identity of this infant, that he is a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Right. So we, we have got we have got the, the students and the people that are listening and they are watching uh, the, the process of incarnation. And they see Jesus coming, and they say, "Behold, uh, this is the Emmanuel that was uh, was promised." You know, with all the step by step that was uh, that were taking place, he was, they were able to see that here is, here, here, is, here is the Master. Right. So it is the ability of the pupils to be able to take the message that is coming from the Master and say, "Look, this is what we're seeing blurry kind of thing that we're not clear about." And behold, he is the one who is incarnated himself. Uh, I, I myself, you know what? I, I, I really admire and envy these first peoples. Why? Because it is the their humbleness. You know, it's because of the aspect of being humble that enabled them to understand that this child. They didn't look at the outward appearance, but from birth, because he was vulnerable when he was born. I mean, remember, remember a little child, um, you know, lying there. And this particular child is like, you know, uh, need tender care, need to be cared for, feeding and all that. But they understood that this was the savior of men. That, uh, that's how these peoples uh, were, were actually located. Right. I just want to uh, say that we, we need to have a, a connection and understanding of the, uh, you know, science, uh, you know, and to have humbleness so that we'll be able to understand the message of Jesus. Right. Um, before he has spoken his first parable or performed his first miracle, the master teacher is worthy of our worship because of who he is. To fully appreciate the, uh, latter, uh, the later teaching ministry of Jesus, we must join these early peoples, the wise men, in their worship of the master teacher. The one whose teachings we, adm we admire is more than a wiser educator. He is God come to dwell with the humankind. Christian education is rooted in the worship of Christ. All right. Um, uh, anything wants to add on that as I read the last uh, conclusion? All right. So I will conclude by saying, uh, in, in the teacher said from God, all true education work finds its center of this work today is very as of the work he established 1800 years ago. The Savior speaks in the words, I am the first and the last and the living one. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the, and the end. In the presence of such a teacher, of such opportunity for divine education, what waste and folly is it to seek an education apart from him, to seek to be wiser apart from wisdom, to be true while rejecting the truth, to seek illumination apart from the light and existence without the life, to turn from the foundation of living waters 
and you out broken cisterns that can hold no water. Behold, he is still inviting. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of him shall flow rivers of living water. The water that I shall give him shall become in him a well of water springing up unto eternal life. That's from John 7, verse 37. Dear teacher, at the highest preparation of your work, I appoint you to the words, the life, the methods, and of the prince of teachers. I bid you consider him. Here is your true ideal. Behold it. Dwell upon it until the spirit of divine teacher shall take possession of your heart and life. Reflecting as a mirror the glory of the Lord, you will be transformed into the same image. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. This is the secret of power over you peoples. Reflect him. Education page 282. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and may he bless us as we enter into the next session of our program. Thank you and God bless everyone.